For sure. You think you'll bring Nagata up in front of the team and get an opponent's perspective now? That <laughs> well, he, he's already been talking about that from score one, so we won't have to bring him out there. And, and, and the beauty of it is when you come into most games, and this is kind of where the culture of our team has always been very good, our main focus day in and day out in order for us to go 1-0 and is to really, really, really keep the thumb pointed and focused in on us. Look at us and see what we have to be able to do in order to be successful on these given days. We try not to put the focus on 100% on the opponent or the outside world. We want to keep everything kind of focused in on us. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Elijah Jackson? Um, I know that you know Troy Franklin's just really good. Um, Elijah had that early personal foul. Looks like mm -hmm. he came back. Troy uh, got him a couple times. Can you talk a little bit about your defense? Yeah, you know, the, the, the one great thing is those are the ebbs and flows. You know, when you're playing against great offenses, sometimes they're going to get a play. When you're playing against great defenses, sometimes we're going to be able to get a play. It's just the, the ebbs and flows. The one thing that we have to be able to do is you have to have what we call controlled rage to where you can get to the line but don't cross the line. And that's obviously what, what EJ did on that one particular play. He ended up crossing the line, and, and, and it cost us. And usually it's the old antage of who is going to be the person that's going to get caught. It's the second person. They didn't see exactly what Franklin did to him. All they saw was the retaliation. So we just have to continue to keep learning from those moments and make sure that when you're at the point of attack or when you're around scenarios where the chaos gets very high, you make sure you keep your composure and keep your discipline. The defense allowed just 20 explosive. Yeah, um, the, probably the, the biggest thing, just number one, making your open field tackles at the point of attack. That, that's been something that we've really stressed on all year long. Number two, being able to keep everything in front of you. Um, if you can keep it in front of you and be able to be very competitive on the balls going down the field, sometimes the offenses are going to get some because they have a job to do as well. And you also have the mindset of knowing when you come into a game, you're, you're telling yourself we're not giving up any explosive plays because often that, is, that, that starts with a mindset first. And when you have a chance day in and day out to have a chance to practice against one of the best offenses who field some of the best offensive skill players, you're going to be tested every day as well. Anything else for Coach Inch? Swat him away. All right. Questions for Coach, please. Ryan, then. Goal line. Oh, oh sorry. Want to go there first? <laughs> Get the hard stuff out of the way. What oh, you got? Go ahead. Go ahead. The, uh, uh, frustrating. The what happened there? Yeah, it was frustrating. Um, you know, we're definitely close enough to sneak the football. Um, I think probably. You know, my reservations, and Mike was frustrated. Mike wanted to do it. It wasn't a desire piece by Penix. Um, it was just my comfort level with his. The cramping situation was real. That's not like a media deal. He was uh, he was fighting to stand up at some points and, and even drive the football, and they were pulling IVs out right before he was going on the field, literally seconds before. So I think, you know, my concern with that probably overrode that decision just to try to – see if Mike could power through that or what it was going to be. And, and had some goal line plays, honestly, especially the first one um, with the ball in Dylan's hand that we felt good about. And the honest truth is we got split on a double team and um, gave up penetration on the left edge. And, and Dylan had nowhere to go with the ball. So um, that was unfortunate. And then at the end, second to last play, Jeremy Bernard is in. Um, it's a package that he's in on the next play. Uh, and he was out because he was injured after that. He couldn't go for the last play that, that we handed it to Tybo on a read play. And so the package got a little bit screwed up and um, we weren't in the right formation. So that was a bummer. And obviously at the, the most critical time. So got to own that and uh, realize that situations like that just have to be controlled better. And uh, I think ultimately, you know, we just got to do a better job in first and second down and, and put ourselves in a position when you're that close to 
win a game of that magnitude, we, we can't be denied. So we'll, we'll certainly address that and got to improve and have better answers. Was this was just cramping with Mike? That was, that was Yeah, yeah. He, you know, really, he, I think there was a lot of perception that he really got knocked around. There was a couple hits. You know, honestly, the one, um, he got hit by two guys and kind of pinballed um, the guy in front of him, you know, got him okay, but it was the guy from the back at the end of the play that hit him that, that was the only real shot shot that he took. Um, otherwise, most of the stuff was kind of late, and he kind of rolled out of it and things like that. So he was, from that standpoint, he was okay. He never even talked about that. But the cramping thing was was real. Matter of fact, the one series I thought, you know, Demo was warming up. I thought Demo was going to get out there and, and start the drive just because they weren't done with the, with the IV bag yet. But Mike ran out there at the last second and, and was ready to go. How's he been since? He's great. He's great. You know, that's, that's something to... Uh, Mike has to manage that a little bit. He, he does a does a great job staying hydrated and things like that. He fights it, you know, when he's working that hard. So uh, I know he was frustrated by it, but uh, he's doing he's doing awesome, hundred percent. What was the attraction to Tybo on the goal line? Is he, his speed or? or his yeah, it was a two way play, so it was a it was a flat um, like a fly sweep type play, and, and Tybo just fastest guy we got, and and then there was a keep read from Mike on the backside of it with a counter play that. Um, was a possibility on the backside. So yeah, that was it. It was just it was just gas. Ryan, the play to Rome for the touchdown. Yeah. Clock is running. You snap it with 34 seconds on the play clock. Was there any talk about running a little more clock before you? You know, uh, fair question. Fair question. I think uh, for us, uh, obviously, with what had just transpired down there, tight in the red zone, and and Oregon is pretty tough inside the 10, um, and they're really good at that. I felt like Mike knew at any point if he had a chance to win the football game and get man matchup, go go win the game. And you know, trust our defense have been playing good at the end of the football game. And um, certainly, that's those are thoughts that go through our mind, and those are things that we talk about. But just the aggressive mindset to win when the availability came against a really good defense. You know, that's something I think people probably downplay a little bit. Is you sit there and, and try to milk the clock and don't make the right plays, and the tighter you get to the the end zone, the less real estate that we have. And those things can get a little more complicated. And so I felt like Mike made a great decision. Um, it was a two-way play with a screen and a single um, screen to the field and single to Rome. And he got the matchup we wanted. And, you know, go win the game. Don't don't hesitate making that play. So, uh, But it's certainly a fair question as far as running the clock off and keeping them pinned down. And had they played zone coverage and we thrown the screen, um, some more things would have happened there as far as running the clock. Do you have any update on J-Mac? Yeah, uh, you know, I think he's he's doing better. You know, I think it just kind of surprised him a little bit, honestly, that his knee gave out a little bit. And, you know, he's feeling good after the game. Um, I know he's back at the doctor today, and, and they're just, you know, double-checking. Strength was good. Structure was good after the game. And, and they were feeling pretty confident about it. So, you know, we're just trying to help J-Mac work through it and, and see if we can get him back out there. So, so when uh, Oregon loses both their starting cornerbacks on the same play, um, what goes through your mind? I know you, you went for their throat three plays later. Was that it, go for the kill shot? Well, I, I think, you know, Mike's, Mike's trained pretty well to know that and see that as far as, you know, you get down there in the red zone and those, avail you know, just those one-on-one -on -one matchups are good anyways with Rome on anybody. Uh, but then you get a situation like that, I think it only intensifies and making sure you have some calls built in to where Mike has that opportunity to go get that. <clears throat> Looked like maybe Jeremy was banged up a little bit. Yeah, he banged his ankle up on a kickoff return. Um, still trying to see where he's at, honestly. Uh, yesterday, I know they were still trying to examine it, see how much strength he's got in it. And, uh, you know, he was kind of hobbling around at the lift and stuff yesterday. But um, we're anticipating he, he hopefully can make it back. Right, last week was obviously a huge week with game day, Oregon week, that crowd. Yep. Maybe just give us a little bit of perspective now that it's in the rearview mirror. What it was really like for you guys in 12:30 game. What'd you do when you got home Saturday night? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, first of all, uh, hats off to the team. You know, in general, I think coaching staff, players did a great job of just making the main thing the main thing. I think anytime you're in a football game like that, that is the most difficult part. I think it's hard enough for grown men to do, let alone you know guys that are 20 years old. And I just I, I can't compliment the kids enough on just keeping great perspective on the same preparation, the lead up to the football game, not getting caught up too much, you know, and I I thought potentially initially at the beginning of the game, I was a little bit worried about 
you know, where we were at as far as being too excited. We had a legal procedure. We didn't have many penalties, but that was one of them. And, you know, I thought after that first drive, we really, really settled in. So um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like there was ever a point during the week where the guy's focus was on anything but the game and what they're going to have to do to beat Oregon and all those type of things. So uh, just a great job. I thought Coach DeBoer did a great job of setting it up, you know, so that the guys and the coaches were put in positions to be able to do that as well. I think sometimes, you know, you can get yourself strung out a little bit too thin and the facility and the building gets pretty crowded and there's a lot of people around and a lot of distractions. And I thought we did a pretty good job of limiting that. And then, uh, yeah, as far as after the game, hung out with family here, went home, opened a good bottle of vino and <laughs> celebrated the win. Right, I asked Coach Inge about Oregon going for it on fourth down before you got the ball back. Yeah. He said they never anticipated them punting. Is that kind of your mindset that you figured they're going to go for it the entire way? And um, I think you have to have two scenarios obviously ready, a backed up situation and calls ready to be backed up um, if they did punt it. And then also another totally set of, different set of thoughts and, and calls if they didn't and what was going to happen at that point. Um, I honestly thought they were going to go for it. Um, just, you know, given the aggressiveness that they've shown in the past and, and in that football game uh, and probably thought they had two downs to do it and they were on their last down. They thought they were going to get it. And just what a play by our defense. You know, two years in a row, kind of the same situation coming up huge at at the right moment. So I thought it was pretty awesome. Before, before uh, J-Mac got hurt, what was the sort of plan of working Giles back in and then how much did that change after? Yeah, it, it changed dramatically. Giles was in the game plan for sure. Um, not, not at the, you know, the level that he ended up contributing, but, you know, it was, it was pretty awesome to see again, you know, another situation where our guys are prepared to be in a moment. That play, um, J-Mac had run the play that Giles scored on and Giles had run it during practice, you know, so having two guys ready to get the exact coverage look that we anticipated and, and hitting it on time was was pretty cool, you know. And again, I think our guys have just seen this over and over where an opportunity arises and just being ready at that particular position, whoever it is, to come in and contribute and make a big play. And I, I don't think there was – there was nobody in our offensive room that was surprised at all that, that Giles made that play. You know, he's a, he's a really good football player. So – it's exciting to see a guy like that step in and make such a huge play. What, what, what happened with the snap with Parker where it just kind of? Yeah, Park, they, they, uh, they just kind of moved defensively up front and Parker snapped the ball. <laughs> and that was it, unfortunately. I mean, thank God Mike was ready enough with his hands to catch the ball and, and get it out so we didn't take a big loss. In both hindsight, of, in both hindsight, of us. Go ahead. In hindsight, on the two, three and outs, do you wish you'd run the ball more because you didn't run the ball? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I thought we had really good stuff for man coverage in, you know, and I, I felt really confident. You know, there was definitely some one-on-one -on -one battles that um, that we won that were, you know, game winners type of th uh, type of thing. And there was a couple that um, was a little bit frustrating. I thought we could have rubbed through a couple of those and maybe got bigger gains. So uh, I, I don't think so. Not in that situation. There was one third medium that I wish I had a different call on. But uh, – you know, you go back and you torture yourself on every call. But um, I felt pretty confident that, you know, nine and the boys are going to be able to break free. And, you know, we, we feel good. I do feel like we are advancing. Dylan's getting stronger every single week. I thought he ran with a ton of courage. Um, and I think he's turned into more than just a complimentary piece. I think it's going to become a strength in our offense. And, and uh, my hat's off to those guys. Like, we, we ran the ball well against a good front. Both of Rome's touchdowns were – you know, not 50-50 balls, but one where, you know, he had tough hands, strong hands, and had mm -hmm. to kind of pull it away from a defender. And you've talked a lot about him gaining strength this offseason, improving in that area. How much, how big is the difference there? What do you, do you think he would have made those plays a year ago? And just how have you seen him progress in that area specifically? Yeah, uh, Rome, you know, I absolutely think he'd made those plays last year. I just, I've always believed in Rome. Um, I do think that the number of footballs that, that go up in the air that he comes down with in practice or back to fall camp, it's just, you know, it's eye-popping uh, the number of times that, that he gets put in those positions and, and we still have access to that. So I think that, you know, there's just – it just shows, you know, there's no doubt, you know, with Mike at the end of the game on, on what to do with the ball. Aside, aside from his physical skills, Rome's physical skills to, to do that, what else makes him so good at, at judging and, and – positioning himself and whatever to make those 50-50 catches. 
Rodgers. Yeah, I think he works at his craft. You know, I think that there's certainly a natural piece that, you know, Rome has. Obviously, there's a ton of God-given talent there. But um, I show clips to the guys um, all the time that, that look like, oh, that was such an easy play. Or, you know, they just make it look so easy. The amount of work that goes into that last play that, you know, that Rome made is, I mean, hours and hours and weeks and months of – training and time and, you know, watching a ball and, oh, I missed time my jump. Let me do it again. Somebody run with me, you know, and that the number of times those kids do that and make those throws and those catches is, you know, it's thousands, you know. And so I think that just the desire and tenacity to, to go out and make your skill set the best in the country is, is – that's Rome. And he's done a great job with that. How about the play before to Polk? Nobody seems to be talking about that. How, how aware were you of the backup personnel that were on the field for Oregon? And how much of that throw was Mike just throwing it up and just having Jillian go get it? You know, um, again, when I, when I talk to NFL scouts about Mike, one of the things I always bring up first is his vision. And so we were watching the film yesterday, and I'm like, just tell me what you saw. And so there, there was an outbreaker there by Giles. And the safety, Williams, froze on that. And Mike saw him freeze on the outbreaker and knew there was a vertical seam there to JP and, and cut it loose at exactly the same time. And it just shows, you know, Mike's speed to release between decision and ball out of hand and just his elite vision of once he had the defender froze, he had that vertical seam and he knew it. And then obviously a guy he trusts. I mean, JP, his head, you know, you talk about Rome and all those guys. JP is as tough and sure handed as anybody I've ever seen. What was your best play call on Saturday? What's that? What was your best play call on Saturday? The last one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew there was a good chance it'd be a nine and nine and one's hands. Was there a particular moment or play that you take away from? There's so many from the weekend with all the hype and the things and the game. And is there anything that stands out to you as your favorite? Uh, my favorite, uh, honestly, seeing Mike in the tunnel after the game. You know, that was. Uh, Honestly, caught me off guard a little bit, just being emotional, and um, you know, I hadn't really had that moment this year yet with Mike, and uh, last year, you know, in the locker room at Oregon was kind of like that. But uh, you know, just to see that kid rise up on an occasion like this was was really special, and, and all the guys, I just know how hard they all work and what they put in, and the belief that they've paid back into the program, you know, and that. Those kids aren't surprised that they're in this position. They believe that we're going to be right where we're standing right now. So that that's special to me. Are you st still thinking you'll keep Giles to four games, or you know how you? Kind of Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? Um, I think it'll be hard. It'll be harder now, but uh, a huge part of that, obviously, um, is tied into to J Mac and Germ. You know, if those guys are healthy and how much availability they have. You know, we'll we'll keep assessing that week to week and. You know, obviously saving it till this week and it was the first game we used is pretty cool that we still even have a shot to talk about that. In a game like that where you know the stakes, it's going back and forth the way that it is, and pretty, you know, you'll remember that forever. You're trying to stay composed, but what are the emotional swings like in the box for you when you're going down and you're going up? And yeah, how do you handle that throughout the course of a game like that? You, you try to limit them. The same thing you tell the, the kids. I think you know, the way I've always coached quarterbacks is I think touchdowns are your release point. And so when that happens, it, it feels like you can let it out. And, you know, then you got a chance to collect yourself and, and move on to the next series or the rest of the game or whatever it is. But, I, you know, until those moments happen, I don't, you know, I think you got to stay pretty level-headed, obviously, and try to make the best decisions you can because it is emotional and you, you can get yourself up and down. It's also why... I call it from the box is to try to keep myself there. You know, you make those decisions that go on a call sheet in a sterile environment and you're trying to keep it as much as that as possible. So, uh, but at some points, you know, it, you just got to let it out and then be ready to move on and script the next series. Did you see the video reaction of you in the box that ABC showed after the touchdown? I did not. I have not seen it. <laughs> Hopefully it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's just like, what's, what's that box like? Yeah, we go crazy on one like that. I mean, you, you, you're thinking about, you know, everything that it took to get to that moment. And then when the moment happens, the kids rise up and make such a big play. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's the investment piece and just how excited you are. It's it's a total pandemonium. It's, it's awesome. When you, you guys hit the touchdown and, and that's in the defense's hands, what do you do? I mean, you stay, stay up in the box. Script, you script for overtime. Okay. 
you get ready for overtime. And first thing I did was tell Mike, you know, like great play and all that. And then um, it, it reminded me a lot, honestly, of um, 2021 with uh, Hayner at UCLA. We had kind of a similar situation where we hit one and there was maybe 50 seconds left or something like that for, uh, no, there was less than that. There was less time than that. But they were still going to have an opportunity to come back out and score. And I just told Mike, you know, go up and down the sideline right now and get the guy's mind set that we're going to have to still go out in overtime and win this football game. That That's, what, that's what's going to happen. And or we're going to have to try to score with virtually no time left, you know, because you don't want the guys just sitting there, you know, waiting for the defense to win the game per se. Obviously, that's what everybody wants to happen. But I think the letdown of that, if you allow it to happen, makes it really hard to get yourself up for overtime. So I think that's a really critical piece that Mike did a good job with. And, you know, and once he got up and down, he said, go relax, calm down, think about the next series, overtime, all the plays we've talked about. And so he did a good job of that. You know, got the guys in good space and then went and found a calm spot to, to get himself ready. Dylan Johnson started the year not 100%. You seem to be riding him pretty hard, right? Yep. Just running him. Has he got the ability to be that 20 to 25 carry a guy? Uh, game guy, or do you want to kind of cut that back and throttle it back a little bit? No, I, I think he absolutely does. I think we, just like any player, you know, especially in the running back room, those guys take a lot of pounding and, and you know, it's a very physical position, especially with the style of runner that Dylan is. So um, I think we got to be really smart and, and try to take care of him at the same time. I do think the stronger he gets and the more condition he gets in, which I still think he can get stronger, um, I think that he can be a punishing fourth quarter runner. You know, and I think that that's an element, a piece of our offense that is going to continue to grow. You only had five flags total and you had none in the second half. How much of an emphasis was put on that after the previous two or three games? Yeah, a lot. I mean, and, and was in those three games as well. But, uh, um, you know, just getting the kids, trying to figure it out as a coaching staff, you know, diving into why are these things happening. And again, I think, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a piece to holding calls and things like that. Is it egregious? Um, did they make a bad decision to hold the guy, you know, not let him go, whatever those things are. But then, you know, the illegal shifts and, you know, snap infractions, things like that, those, those are frustrating. Just trying to eliminate the free ones has been a, a huge point of emphasis, you know. And, and uh, we do a good job. We have refs at practice, you know, and I think that that matters. And, you know, I tell those guys to throw flags. If they see something, we need to help. And, and I do think that helps. I know uh, Arizona State has a new coach and, just a handful of starters from last year's game, but do you play up the fact that this is the last team to beat your guys when you do your prep this week? You know, uh, I didn't play it up that way. I didn't. I guess I didn't think of it that way. I just thought of uh, the same scenario, I guess. You know, uh, overwhelming favorite, uh, playing an underdog team, and just the amount of preparation. So the challenge is easy. It's it's if we say we're all about the standard and that the standard doesn't change, whether you're playing the Ducks or Arizona State. Um, I told the guys I'm excited to be out there on Tuesday with them and see if that's, you know, just talk or is that really who we are? Because there's obviously still a, a ton of things that we need to get better at. You know, we're, we're not a finished product yet. And if the guys believe that and, you know, they're humble enough to accept that and get out on the field, uh, I think we'll get even better this week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. <clears throat> All right, good afternoon. Uh, just um, I know you're hearing a lot about the, the game, um, getting a chance to reflect on it, watch the film. I think, uh, you know, just number one, super proud of the kids, as I said on Saturday. Um, just the resiliency and the fight, um, all those pieces. Uh, still some things uh, certainly we can be better at that, uh, you know, you're hashing out, we're hashing out. Um, but uh, just, you know, in a position now, you know, you know, six and zero, oh, and um, you know, just like where we're at, like the makeup of our team, um, you know, and just uh, these 
these tests you go through. Um, it just helps build character. And, uh, you know, these are special times. It was a special weekend for us. Um, not just the game itself, but everything that surrounded the game. And I thought the guys did a great job of just uh, really staying within themselves, um, trying to take a lot of the stuff off their plate, off the coaching staff's plate. But um, there's inevitably things that inevitably things that they need to be uh, be available for, especially when it comes to to media and so forth. So um, proud of the guys, and uh, you know we get back to work uh, tomorrow morning. And so. Um, Coach Grubb just uh, alluded to, you know, the standard being the standard. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to realize, you know, what this game was a year ago uh, as far as the impact it had looking back on the season and uh, knowing that uh, it's one that uh, certainly hurt our chances and having uh, bigger opportunities, whether it be a, a conference championship game or, or whatever it may be. But I also know that maybe that was the game that uh, really has made us who we are. You know, uh, at that time, you know, just um, understanding that we can bounce back and what it takes to bounce back. And, um, you know, things happen for a reason. So here we are um, with a different set of uh, circumstances, um, you know, at a very similar or at kind of a point in the season, you know, a few games, six games in or so. Um, but uh, excited about the new challenge and playing Arizona State and being at home. So again, Husky, Husky Nation. I need you there, just like this last week. So I'm excited to do it again. Caleb, going through the crowd, watching the TV copy, you're looking for landing after the game. You're getting bumped by students <laughs> rushing the field, a huge crowd pulling behind you with the interview with Holly Rowe, and then just going through that sea of humanity back to the locker room. What is that whole experience like for you? Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's uh, it's fun. It's especially fun because I know what the that this is what the guys are experiencing and. Um, you know, I think as coaches, you get a chance, right? I mean, you've been doing this for 23 or so years, you know, and so there's the moments that, um, you know, I've had and, and I'll continue to get to have, you know, as a coach. Um, but this window, right, for these guys is small. Um, some guys, you know, three years, four years, five years. Yes, I understand there's COVID guys, six years. But, man, in, in the span of your lifetime, um, it's a really short amount of time and it comes and goes fast. And so... These guys having this experience and these moments um, and knowing that, uh, you know, I have a piece of, uh, you know, things that they'll be talking about 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, um, it's really special. And so having that also, uh, you know, be a part of the fan base's memories and just, uh, you know, Husky Nation doing what they're, what we asked them to do and how we're hoping they were going to be. And, uh, you know, they brought it and uh, enjoying it and celebrating together. Uh, that's what it's all about. With the Rome touchdowns, we asked Grubb, but I mean, the physical strength he added this offseason, kind of the, the sense of the ball in the air, what is it about him, his skill set, that allows him to track balls and, and come down with balls? Yeah, I think you just see it being easier for him. Um, just the separation and holding the line, you know, giving, uh, you know, Michael more room to throw the ball, um, you know. His height already is an advantage, and so uh, if a defender plays behind, you just throw it over the top. A defender, you know, has that coverage, and they're even or in front of him. Um, you know, just keep it high and away. And and Rome's got those ball skills. He's got the size, the strength, to be able to get that separation. And um, you know, it just continues to get easier. You see it every single day in practice. We do those one on ones every, you know, Wednesday. We're doing. Um, you know, we're doing red zone one-on-ones, you know, and that's uh, nothing new that we've never seen. So um, those guys being on the same page and, and just attacking the moment and uh, coming through uh, is, is really cool. Did you feel like the extra room just gave you an advantage? I mean, Ryan talked about kind of not wanting to deal with the goal line situation, I guess. Did that kind of give you guys an advantage just kind of playing from outside like that? Yeah, you knew you needed a touchdown, right? And so it'd be in down by four. Um, and, you know, just as Ryan said, you know, you get down there closer, it gets harder. And uh, we had come up short the drive before, and you'd love to take some time off the clock. But you just don't know when you're going to get that same coverage. You know, if it's second and long, third and long, um, and there's less time on the clock, the defense's coverages are going to play a little differently, more than likely. It might be a little more zone-ish or, or, you know. Um, each situation can be different. And so that was the moment. That was the time we got the one on one with Rome. And, uh, you know, those guys, you know, were all over it. And Mike has got just 
you know, a great recognition, um, coverages and all that, but he, he sees matchups and it's not just Rome, it's other matchups that happen, you know, receivers on linebackers and safeties. And that happens throughout the course of the game. He's just so sharp when it comes to that, uh, you know, knowing their personnel, um, that's happened ever since I've known him. Several times this week, I heard you say we're built for this. Can you expand on that a little bit and what exactly? Yeah, I think it's a combination of the, the things we've been through together. You know, um, the highs and knowing how to, you know, play in those big moments and then the lows uh, like we like a year ago. Um, and then um, just everything that we talk through and everything, um, whether it comes from the coaches, but, you know, even more so right now being what I would consider a player led team. You know, and that's my goal is to help enable them to be that, you know. Um, we give them the, the template. We give them the, the guidance, the organization. Um, a plan and um, them making it what it is by keeping uh, themselves, holding themsel themselves and each other accountable um, and taking ownership and just making whatever, even that, that play, that scheme, but this team theirs. And uh, we've been through it, you know, and, and you try to point those things out a year ago um, to where if we're ever in this spot again, this is what we do. And so the continuity of coaches, the continuity of players, um, there's just so many lessons we've learned together and things we've we've uh, held on to. And uh, when these moments come, um, we take advantage of that knowledge and that trust. I know you'd, you'd said there was no way Michael was going to come out of the game, but how close were you to have to start that series with Dylan? I know, like Grub said, he was maybe still getting IV on the sideline. How, how tight was that? Yeah, it was real tight. Um, it was uh, before a, a timeout, TV timeout, I think it was. Uh, and change of possession, and um, you know, I popped in there to see, and uh, knew that they were going to push it till the very end. And then I didn't see him come out, and uh, you know, of the tent, and um, Dylan was ready to go, and he he was uh, ready to go out there and do it. And um, you know, Mike came running out and got the play and ran right straight to the huddle, so I didn't even get a chance to talk to him. But um, you know, those are the things that are just uh, you know the stories within the story, you know, and. Uh, the crazy things that you know a lot of people don't realize are happening. You know, he's you know, a lot of times talking to you know Ryan on the head so headphones and going through the next drive. And in that moment, he's just trying to get himself you know ready to to be able to go take the next snap. So um, really, really uh, proud of him. Proud of uh, the way he battled and and uh, you know, he's just super competitive. And I think again, all the experiences and his time playing football and everything he's been through. Um, he was going to do everything to make sure he didn't miss this opportunity to to be in charge and, and lead our team to victory. And that was right before the series that ended with the, the goal line stand. Oh, I think it was uh, much earlier. If I remember right, it was much earlier than that in the fourth quarter. I mean, there was a couple drives. Um, I, I, I might be – I can't give you the exact right off right off hand, but there was, it seemed like it was pretty early in the fourth quarter. Um, in mid midway through the fourth quarter, for sure. Kaylee, the Mike. pregame scene, it was kind of chaos on the field before the game. Uh, celebrities, right? Julio Rodriguez, all that. Colin Coward was down there. Um, actors, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was aware, you know, and I, I you know, got a chance to, to be around uh, some of that and see it. It's, uh, it's fun. I'm glad that this is a place where, you know, people, you know, want to come uh, – and feel like uh, they can add to the excitement and also feel entertained themselves, you know? And so uh, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of pieces that make uh, made Saturday really cool and are making, you know, being around our program a lot of fun. And uh, so uh, I love it, you know, I told, told uh, Julio, you know, I'm proud of what he does for, for our city, you know? And, um, you know, we are trying to do our part um, as a football program to, bring people together and make uh, make Saturday special. But uh, there's no question that uh, what he, he does and the excitement he generates. And I told him my own family, you know, loves watching him play. And we're excited about what he does. Uh, you know, we're, we, love, we love the game of baseball. But uh, it was really fun to see him on the sideline and be able to present him a jersey. Has Mike had issues with ramping like that before that you know of? Uh, not a lot. I mean, small. But uh, usually, uh, maybe maybe even right late in the game, or you know, not not a lot though. I, I remember a time or two, but I can't pinpoint that time. When I got home Saturday night, I had messages from all over the country. I, I used to work back east, for that matter. Um, 
but I got messages from Virginia, Georgia, that it's almost like they discovered the Huskies over the weekend, the rest of the country. And, and I just wondered how much of a selling point was that whole atmosphere, the outcome? Mm -hmm. um, they just said, what a great game, what a fun team. What, you know, and, and I just thought you picked up all kinds of marketing abilities yeah. that weekend. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the time, the time of the day, uh, the, the the game day piece, uh, just everything. Um, you know, Pat McAfee uh, coming in and doing his show. Uh, there's just so many pieces to it that, uh, you know, um, surrounded the program. And our guys, I think, you know, are just very willing to, to be a part of it and excited to be a part of it. And then, you know, just I think our culture coming through, you know, how hard we play uh, comes through, I think, on TV, um, the excitement that uh, that we have for each other as a, as a team um, and then just the style of play that we have, you know. So, um, yeah, I certainly felt the same thing. Uh, it was just a, a great weekend for our program um, and, uh, you know, just a lot, lot of great things that we can build on going forward. What was yesterday like? When you got the guys back together, were they still buzzing from Saturday, or did they kind of like? Yeah, no, I mean certainly, certainly, but um, I think there's just there's an understanding that every time you win a game, um, every the next game matters even more. You know, and just the opportunity for our team to to reach our goals and do the things that we aspire to do. Um, you know that that they're right in front of us, and so. Um, just digging in, uh, enthusiasm, the energy. Um, it has. It wasn't just last week. We've had this energy going on, you know, multiple weeks. Probably really strongly. I mean, other than yeah, it was the opener against Boise and playing at home against uh, Tulsa, but going to, to Michigan State, you know, and then seeing what we did there, and then you know, um, feeling like man, you know, we're right where we want to be. We just got to continue to get better. Um, the the improvement needs to continue to to grow and uh you know we know what we are now is still not going to be what we are a month from now two months from now and how hard is it to get 100 plus 20 year old kids to refocus again i mean i think i i honestly with this group i don't i mean i've never taken nothing for granted so it takes everyone and and that's where the accountability and the ownership that these guys have with each other if it was just a coaching staff that was trying to bring it together um it would be hard but we have enough guys that are just completely invested and have have a voice and um, you know want it extremely bad, and so um, you know they they are holding each other accountable, um, and so um, it's not as hard as it would be as if we had a young team and this is the first time we've been through it. You guys uh, suited up uh, Julius Bulow, but it looked like he didn't play. Is he close? Was he available? Was this yeah, he's really close, and he, yeah, because he suited up, he certainly would have been available for us. Um, so, um, you know, we continue to work, and he's getting there. Um, and uh, it was good to probably just you know give him another week now where he didn't have any setbacks, and uh, you know I, he practiced really most of last week. So. Uh, you know, we'll see and continue to evaluate as we go through this week on what the best scenario is for us with him playing. It's maybe a strange question because they've, they've been so good, but are you starting to get concerned at all about receiver depth just with Jalen Hurd and with Jeremy banged up a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, you know, we Denzel's still there, you know. I mean, there's a lot of talent in that room, and so, but I think you saw just a small glimpse of it. Um, you know, there becomes a, um, there becomes kind of a r rhythm uh, to our rotations. Uh, it's not something you could pick up on as far as tendencies or plays or anything like that. But um, as we grow the offense, and I think you just do this every year, you know, you just grow off of each game you play and the plays off the plays and different things like that just to, to keep defenses off balance. But, um, you know, there was a, just some things that weren't quite in sync, especially in the pre-snap. Once we got lined up and it just – there was just a Christmas that maybe even doesn't even show up on film um, that I know we got to continue to work at. And um, guys were playing – with different combinations of players. It's not really that they don't know what they're doing. It's just a trust because a certain group might not have been in practice because of this injury and that injury or that guy out, you know. So, um, you know, now, now those guys will get that chance to, to work and, um, you know, hopefully we'll be fine with uh, with J-Mac and uh, Jeremy getting back out there here early in the week. Did Zion get banged up a little bit Saturday? Uh, nothing major. No, he'll be fine, yeah. And what, 
What kind of impact? You had a lot of recruits in town, obviously. What, what kind of impact do you think Saturday had? Yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome weekend for us. I mean, Friday, um, there was a few guys even in, and Saturday, of course, the game. Um, you know, there were a lot of them were coming in Saturday morning, late, uh, or late morning. Um, so Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, Sunday morning, Sunday after Sunday afternoon was a, a great time for us to um, really get with them, and and uh, you know they got to see our program, they got to see the environment, and what you know this place is all about. Uh, the tr pride tradition, I mean came through, shown, was shining through and just, uh, you know, the crowd and the alumni that appeared here and who all, who all showed up. So um, it was, it was a, it was huge for the recruiting efforts. That's for sure. Coach, every week it seems like the running game is getting a little bit better, especially with Dylan Johnson getting a little bit more healthy. Can you talk a little bit about your running game and then Garrett Hatchett and uh, Parker Brailsford on the offensive line being the two new guys up there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's a combination of um, Dylan continuing to, uh, just physically, you know, get stronger. Um, you know, he, he's becoming what we were thinking he was going to be. You know, uh, when we saw film and and uh, becoming twitchier and making the first guy miss for sure. And then, you know, there's some piles that were moving forward, and there's some guys that were, you know, arm tackling another one coming from the side and just uh, falling ahead for first downs. That uh, you know that uh, I remember, and um, the combination of that along with our old line just. You know, getting more reps and being in sync. Yeah, Parker and uh, Garen, um, every snap they take, they're continuing to get better and working side by side. Um, you can see, uh, you know, you see that improvement. So, um, you know, our mainstay is at tackle, uh, continue to do their thing. Um, and then the other three working inside together with uh, Nate as well. Um, I'm just really proud of the way they keep their head down and every week, you know, work on improving and uh, it's showing up I mean uh, 20 carries for Dylan you know a couple catches uh, that's a that's a good day's work and really you know there's not a lot of times we can point to the last two years where we've had a back carry the load like he did but uh, he's built for it you know and and uh, we needed it Caitlin um, last night I um, I went back and looked at the Arizona State game and looked at who's still there and who's gone and and I, I watched your pre, your news conference afterwards. And, and the reason I bring this up is two years ago, they lost eight times here. And naturally, they paid homage to the, the, the winning side. But it seemed like there was a lot of deflation and, and a lot of surprise shock. And after you guys lost to Arizona State last year, it just struck me your approach was kind of firm. Not, not threatening, but just like, we're going back to work. And, and it, do you remember that? Because you haven't lost since mm -hmm. that you know, a year ago, 12 yeah. months ago. And, you know, 15, 16 games ago. Yeah, I remember, uh, you know, the first uh, one against UCLA um, being more about, hey, you know, let's remember this and what it feels like. And then the second time, uh, the week a week later, going on the road and understanding, you know, there's only one way to, to get through this, and that's to go back to work, you know. And I think that's what you're referring to. And so um, that's just always the belief. And it wasn't like we didn't do that after the UCLA game. But um, I'm just really making the point that, you know, you want to change. You want to change the direction it's going. Um, you know, you, gotta, you just got to get to work and you got to believe and you got to keep fighting. And, you know, those are one of the lessons and those are some of the things that we remember right now and have got us back to this point, got us through last year, got us to this point. It's just that, that, that you know, the willingness to just go back to work. And that's what tomorrow's going to be. Um, keeping a positive mindset. Um, starts with the coaching staff, you know, our leadership, our players, um, just uh, continue to, to be positive uh, and, re you know, be in there for each other because guys are going to have a bad day, you know, maybe not just on game day, but even the day where you, you just wake up and you're a little more tired, but uh, someone else got to pick you up. And I think that's what we're really becoming really good at. There was a lot of talk about Dan Lanning going for it on fourth down, but you made a gutsy call too going for it on fourth down. Jack Westover catching yeah. the ball. Can you talk a little bit about what your mindset was and just the catch that Jack made. Yeah, I felt like uh, down and distance wise, it was a it was a it was a, a spot where we just we could ha we had him in conflict, you know. And I like the the play call with the play action, um, just real quick, easy throw out in the flat. Um, you know, it, Jack had to make a really good catch to to keep the chains moving. Um, but um, we have you know plays that uh, we have you know, ready to go and, and uh, you know, it wasn't like a fourth and th four, you know, something where maybe it's a little more pass oriented, I think, run or th throw. And, um, you know, I like the play call. And, um, you know, I think, 
you know, it's great that Jack caught the ball because, uh, you know, it would have given the deep offense for them a little bit more time to score. So I know we gave the ball up on that drive. Um, but I, I just felt like, hey, you know, we're in a spot where, you know, we get the score. I mean, they get the ball to come out in the third quarter. Um, it's just one of those. Um, it's a risk. Yeah, I get it. But I felt like it was one where, you know, we would, if we just did our part and executed, um, that we would convert. Is that your call or is that Ryan's call to go for it? Oh, I go. Yeah, I can make the call to go for it. Yeah, those are. But um, I, I, I liked what Ryan called there for sure. You know, felt pretty confident that uh, that call would get us a first down. How many texts and messages did you get after the game? <laughs> I finally got to him last night. I apologize. I need to apologize to my mom because uh, she got a. A heart emoji, I think, on Saturday, and that was about it because uh, hers, hers were buried in there with the other 700 or so of them. So, um, but it's awesome. It's uh, it's a pr it's you know it's it's cool to have have that and have the support and like you're saying, it's from one side of the country to the other and friends, family, and you know peers and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was uh, it's exciting. And you got back to all 700 in some form or fashion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kalen, the Cal game was late. This one's a late game. What's the key to keeping those kids focused? Since yeah, you, you saying during the day? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think we're actually, I mean, I've become pretty accustomed to it. Um, I feel like we thrive. Again, I go back to the maturity of our football team and how, you know, if they have more time to prepare, they're going to use it in, a right, in the right way. And they have that good understanding and balance. We talk about this all the time. Like, what's your process? Not just throughout the week and the energy you bring, but what's that process look like even the last 48 hours, the last 24 hours, game day in the morning? I mean, this last week, with it being an earlier kickoff, I reminded the guys on Friday after practice that the things that are your routine, you know, are you watching the blitz cut up tape or whatever it might be, you know, on a Saturday morning or afternoon, you got to get that done at some point you know, Friday night or early Saturday morning. And so our guys, um, they, we, we continue to challenge them on refining their process to where like, man, it's, it's like locked in, like this is as good as it gets and um, continue to evaluate it. So um, guys get a chance to watch the football on Saturday. Um, their heads are in, you know, around that space too. And we're all together in a hotel. So, um, you know, they're, they're eating good food and, and uh, at, the, at the right times, you know, and so um, um, it's more time that we get to spend together, you know, so you try to look at the positives that come along with that uh, when, when you do have the late kickoffs. Has your mom been to a game yet out here? Yeah, they came the first two. Yeah, they came the first two, so it's good to see them. They knew that it would be a little bit crazy with uh, who was all coming out and tried to take a back seat to, to friends, other friends and, and family that were coming out for this one. Good. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Coach. Yep. You still know Zach Durfee.